Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 109. We're rolling our way into the middle of July, a little bit after the middle of July. Hope you guys are having a wonderful summer or winter if you're on the other side. I don't think anybody actually standing here with us is, but hope you're enjoying your weather. I know Bob isn't. Uh, these meetings are recorded for people that are unable to be with us right here, right now. Let's go jump into our agenda. Our agenda is nice and short, which is actually the way I kind of like it. Um, triage, pull requests, and then questions and comments. Um, and then we'll start talking about adding things to the agenda you know, in the future when people want to do that. Um, but I'm not going to talk about the release that we did in the past, so let's move on. Triage. Bob, I don't give you as much run-up. You ready? Uh, I know. I'm, I'm used to that WIC 3.10.3 update. But exactly. I'm still ready. Yes. All right. Uh, a few more bugs this week than last week. Um, so it's all right. Some Half of them came in yesterday. So. Oh, really? <laughs> this yeah. one was 13 days ago. Um, oh, this is the bug. I remember this bug that went back and forth a lot where the guy was like, yep. this command line generates bad stuff. And we're like, no, it doesn't. But it looks like he finally found the switch that is generating something bad. Blair, it looks like Blair found that. Yes, this is generating something incorrect. So um seems like something that could be fixed in... 3x, I suppose. If someone wanted to go about doing that. Yeah, yeah. I don't I'm know sure. how many people use suppressed fragments. It's not yeah, optimal. I, right, so, right. But uh, yeah, all right, cool. But it seems like it should either go away or be fixed because generating bad code leads us to these kinds of things. But yeah, yes. Out of memory exception, harvesting large number of files with transform parameter. Uh, so their transform is probably blowing the world up, something in the transform processor, which is not entirely possible. Don't do that. Um, yeah, and you know, there's all this copy, copy. So who knows what it's could be doing behind the scenes? It Magic does everything. seem really odd. 416 is not a big number. No, but uh, yeah, so. Someone could look at this if they wanted and dig into it. I suppose if we could fix it, we could try to fix it in 3x and could carry on. Well, is it? Is it some? I mean, is there anything for us to look at? I guess is my my question here. Um, is, this, is this a bug or is this just it's a problem inherent to using XSLT with uh, a, I guess moderate number of files? I don't. I mean, know. sure. You know, is this like oh well, it, okay, fine. Heat needs to be 64-bit now. I mean, is that the only <laughs> is that the only solution to this? Yeah, I um, guess is my question. Or it could be, yeah, don't use a style sheet that blows out memory. I don't know. Um, or don't use a style sheet at the same time as heat. Yeah, and you know, yeah, I don't know. So, so you want to keep it open for investigation? Yeah, I think someone could look at it if they want to. Okay. Um, no project template item template. Oh, this is the. Uh, inst yeah, we don't support VS15 yet. <laughs> and then he's like, "What should I do?" I'm like, "You could add the support." And he's like, "Thanks," and then closed it. So, <laughs> do we need this bug to for? No, it's not titled well. I think we know what we're doing Visual Studio 15 support at some point, right? Uh, yeah, I don't need this bug for that <laughs> in general. I, I, I don't. I don't even I, personally. I mean, and. Obviously, someone, like you suggested, could do the work, but, um, you know, as long as Microsoft is, one, in the process of moving installation technologies and recommending that you not install this, these previews on a production machine, I'm probably not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. It's not clear to me whether they're going to, you know, they're, they're still maintaining both installers, and it's not clear to me that, you know, what's happening there, so... Yeah. So we're still waiting for them to stabilize their role a little bit more. Yep. Having watched the world get burned by .NET Core, eh, I'm kind of fine just letting it ride for a while. Um, new Wix BAUI. Yay, we should do this. Um, and today we're going to talk about the whip that Phil has opened. So let's, I say we open this. I already put it in 4.0 to make it clear. Um, yeah. And say we should do this feature. Oh, oh, and we have a fill. All right. Fill. So, yeah, let's do that. All right. I have to ask, though, is this actually a picture of Phil? 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 Yes. All right. 
you never know. People go out there and it has a the head tilt and everything like maybe a movie shot or something. So I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> um, there's currently no way to populate the combo box in a standard Bootstrap application in the options page. Oh, is this a 4 thing? So they want the ability to hard code the options in a combo box, I guess? Like, that probably makes sense. Yeah, it does not have child element list item or anything like that for populating a combo box. Yeah, the combo box support in CMutal, both 3 and 4, is extremely minimal. Uh, it's basically enough to create the control, but yeah, to add items and it's all get items, it's, it has to be done programmatically. Um, cool. I think we could take this four. Let's just take in four. Be a good feature to add. Yeah, yeah. Um, although I think it's it's more than that. Like it's more than just you know, adding children. I mean, and maybe he gets into yeah, uh, yeah. You have to actually do something with the value as well. Um, if the goal is to do it all non-programmatically. Yeah, I think that's... Just theme authoring. Exactly. I think that all makes sense. Okay. Good feature for four. Yep. Allow default value on registry search. I thought I fixed this one. Maybe I didn't refresh. No, I refreshed. Updated. No, I, I was wondering what you did, because I saw your comment, and it, the it title had changed. Oh, there's a separate button. My bad. There we go. No, I fixed it. Uh. There's a separate... <laughs> All right, whatever. I updated the title. Yay. Um, this threw me for a little bit, too. I was like, you can specify it, but here it is. Wix util registry search. That's the important part. So the ability to specify a default value on a registry, on a util registry search. It does seem reasonable. Yeah, um, it does. So I would like to maybe look at it a different way. We have a number of inconsistencies with how... Wixutil extension searches in general, including registry search, but others as well, um, work compared to their their native MSI equivalent. Um, one of the things we've talked about is how we could move all of the util extension searches uh, into custom actions. Yeah. Since the you know the util searches are generally more powerful and they have things like you know ordering and and other things that come in really really handy. Um, but right now they they work differently. Um, also, expressions work differently, which is a related but distinct problem. Uh, but so sorry, where where I'm going meanderingly is rather than you know adding an attribute for default, perhaps the right solution is to make registry search work like registry search in MSI, which is you you declare a default value. In the pro in the property or variable, not in the search. Agreed. I don't think adding the default attribute is necessarily the right way, but I think the concept of this feature is probably a good thing. Concept is fine. Yeah, I agree. All right. So I think it's fine to add your comment that you know we should design this default attribute may not be the way we want to go, and we could toss it in four. Yep. Oh, it's changed. Um, bundle should have. Expose upgrade code and possibly ID as a variable. Hmm. Yes, private code. If you could specify the upgrade code, but you can have many upgrade codes. Oh, yes, that's what this says here. Um, you can, so I guess it would be only the main upgrade code we would the do. Authored. Yeah. Wow, well, uh, you can author other ones um, in the related bundle. Sorry. The, uh, the area. bundle upgrade code. Yes, the bundle upgrade code, as opposed the to the additional things that can be upgraded exactly. by this bundle. Um, yeah. Is that already in the bootstrap application data.xml? I haven't looked at it recently. That's an interesting question, actually. If it isn't, it could be, but uh, yeah. Well, and and maybe that's the 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 um, that might be a better way to go. Um, I don't I'm like not, that this uh, will be weird if you have other upgrades or. Well, I, uh, yeah, I don't care. I mean, that's 
that doesn't happen that often. Bundle exactly. Bundles always have one, and it it is that bundle's upgrade code. Um, that a bundle might also upgrade other bundles is interesting, but rare. And what would I'm a little worried about giving the ID because then people are going to start writing the ID elsewhere and doing all kinds of funky lookups. And... Well, but funky lookups aren't necessarily a bad thing. So this is, I threw the ID in there because it it has it has come up before, um, where right now you have no access to to the bundle registration except by you know iterating through the entire that entire key looking for the upgrade code now we have we have functions to do that um, but for example asking someone to you know how do i programmatically uninstall a bundle that is less trivial than perhaps it ought to be yeah um, that said yeah i'm not i'm not entirely thrilled about Exposing them via variables, either to be to be honest, There's people abusing them easily. Yeah, yeah. I guess I, I, the right way then is probably to look at at the BA data. If it's not there already, we can add it. Um, it my guess my guess is that it's probably there. Um, yeah, and arguably though, if it's there, then you could argue we can make properties for it. Um, yeah, the ID is. Is the upgrade, Phil, do you happen to have yours laying around? Um, hmm. Although, again, we can always add them. If they're not there, you know, today, they're, they're easy to add. What do people think? I'm... I can see it. If we're already putting the BA data, we're just making it one step harder for a BA to do it. Um, although that might be a hint that you know we don't want you using it. But then you know you could just add one yourself. Um, ha have your BA do it very easily. Um, yeah, the, the current set is kind of interesting. Like we do expose the provider key. Yeah, and I don't know why we provide the provider key. How do you yeah. use that? I mean, exactly. It's a funny thing to be able to use. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm thinking this is not a good thing, and whoever filed this bug should be you know, beat around the, beat around the head and shoulders. Um, Off with his head. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. I've been reading Alice in Wonderland lately. Um, with the kids, right? Yes. Okay, just checking. Um, yeah, no, I think VA data is is the right is the right way to go. Yeah, you know, I I'm I am a little worried about about exposing it in in, in you know pure authoring. This is just a way to, to simplify things for the BA. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anybody have any stronger opinions? Sean? I would say, why not? <laughs> I mean, it's just more work for them to get to it. And they might... I'm not sure why you would want it, though. <laughs> Well, the specific case of the upgrade code is that it's a pain in the ass to grab. Um, it's not. It's not that big of a pain. It's you have to. You have to do the whole uh, detect related bundle callback dance and keep track of of everything coming in. And the callbacks are a little weird. If you have the bundle uh, bundle's upgrade code, the bundle upgrade code, then it would be you know a bit simpler for you to go in and um, you know do your own related bundle search just for upgrades. 
Yeah, I don't know if we want people doing that, though. It's a weak excuse. Phil uses it to get ARP and get the bundle version to display the user in the app. Right, so he passes the upgrade code or whatever to the apps so that they can then go get the bundle version, right? See, that right. I can kind of make sense, sort of, although... Well, that's how you would also offer, um, like, update, auto-update functionality from from your app. Right. Right? You give yeah, it the upgrade code the and say, go code. give me the version of the bundle that's installed and have it go check for updates. That's true. So... Um, at some point, that someone needs sense. the code to look it up. Yeah, that one that one makes sense of the, here's your upgrade code. You can now do the detection for the bundle yep. with that. And, and Phil's case of knowing the ID, then he uses that to go back to the so his apps show the installed version from ARP instead of from whatever version they have they are or whatever. Um, yeah, so 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 we have both cases. Phil has the ID, Jacob has the upgrade code. In, in both instances, what you're doing is you need to store something like in the registry so that your app can go look up. Right, but What's Jacob, how did you pass the bundle upgrade code to the installer? Did you just type it in again? Or did you use a variable or something? Yeah, it is a Wix project. Yeah. Pre processor variable Pre shared variable. between bundle yep. and Yep. WX size. Um, good thing they're, they're used for. The only thing they're good to do for. Um um, so this would have burn write that value for you so you wouldn't have to do the lookup and you could author the upgrade code in the code again and programmatically get the upgrade code. Well, yeah, you could do all this again through, oh, that's, that is interesting though, because um, you can share the upgrade code at the source level where you don't mm -hmm. care whether it's, uh, um, you know, managed at runtime. Because alternately, then you could, you, you wouldn't have to share the a preprocessor variable. Right. Um, it would be, you know, you could even, you know, literal string in the bundle authoring and a variable that you use in an MSI property. Okay. Yeah, no, both of those make sense. Yeah, they have great codes there. At yep. least one of them. Right, Sean. <laughs> I'm sure the other ones are there because it's listed as an element, which is what you would expect. Yeah. Or no, that's on the no, that's on the main element. So that is the main upgrade code then. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Right. So the related bundles are may or may not be listed somewhere. I'm pretty sure the related bundles are there as well. It's uh, you know, this is BA data is just a table dump. Well, you know, if it's already in the BA data, that means the BA can do this. So all we're doing is making this that one step easier. Yeah. And that's where Sean's like, yeah, why not? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at, too. It's like, it, it's not, you know, everything is namespaced, kind of, since, you know, we'll name this with a Wix, Wix prefix. Bundle. and Yeah, Wix bundle prefix. And, yeah, there's more, there's more. All right, let's do it in four. We'll see what happens. Okay. 
all right, well, I filed the bug, then voted against it, and now I'm kind of like plus 0.5, so. <laughs> I, 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 it's all there. We're just making someone do more work, and they could already do the bad thing, and someone would just tell them. And so if they're going to do the bad things, they're going to do the bad things. So it's kind of where I'm all the way around. Um, yeah. This looks like Windows 10 is messing up again. Uh, I went looking for this one. Yeah, so so the... the you know, if you have a per user bundle, it will never elevate. But I'm pretty sure that when Windows 10 was first coming out and people were poking around in it, this came up before, where it's it's Windows that's launching, launching it, the that XE elevated. That's right. Not not burn. I mean, obviously, unless you so work with the manifest, burn's not going to launch elevated. That's right. So I don't. I think this is this is. Uh, bug. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we had a bug similar to this before. But well, we I had one with the um, DTF, right? Not working yeah, from yeah. this thing? Yeah, that's the 4857. Ah, uh, yes. Um, but that went away upgrading to 311 because Sean worked around it. Um, here we'd have to do the, the unelevating to make this work. <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. I mean, no. if... If Windows is the one that's trying to elevate it, then we can't, we have no control over that. No, that's what I'm saying. We'd have to try to unelevate ourselves. Um. Well, I mean, I think this person is complaining that there's a UAC prompt, and there's no way we could get away with the UAC prompt if Windows is elevating it in the beginning. Agreed. Agreed. And, no, they, they when they... Oh. Prompts for UAC and then local data is incorrect during this. Yeah, I mean, right. So the problem is that something is launching us elevated before we're asking to be elevated. And it's got to be the the new modern. Or it's, or it's causing um, oh, what are the, the installer detection to kick in, so we're getting you know shown back to being prompted well, or something like that. He says legacy ARP works. It's modern ARP that doesn't. Yeah, so they're doing something special in there. Do we need no, to they're add just saying it's an XE, so I'm not sure elevated. elevated because it's <laughs> never worked otherwise. Yeah, it's possible. Um, yeah, this is a Win 10 bug, right? Unless there's something that we need to add to our manifest to say that we know not to do this or that, you know, yet another thing in our manifest says, yeah, yeah, no, we're we're cool. Don't do this to us. Um, I'm not looking. Uh, I, I've not seen anything around Win 10 that added stuff to the manifest. The last thing was Windows 8 when they added per monitor DPI. Right, and we have, but we have all the supported Windows things. We have the one for Windows 10, right? Yeah, we have Windows, so, yeah, the Windows 10 app good is in there, <laughs> or app compact good. Yep, so um, they need to file this against Windows, I think. I agree. All right, cool, let's tell them. Like, We'd be happy to fix this, but it's not us, <laughs> as you can tell from the normal programs features. And there's nothing we do special from the absent features. Um, they could attach a log file if they wanted here to just, you know, because the top of the log file should show us um, as well that we were launched elevated beforehand. It will. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because will it'll oh the log file will the log file happened. will say that it was launched and that we launched ourselves again to be unelevated kind of thing. So, um, yeah, my, my expectation is that we're being launched elevated by Windows 10 from apps and features. So, but, so right now when we launch the second instance to become the, the UI host, mm -hmm. we're not trying to unelevate. We're just launching no. the second instance. We're just, yeah, we don't try to unelevate at this point in time at all. All right. Because but that code we, was problematic. Yeah, right, right. Now I remember the sort of history. But if we were to unelevate, then the bundle would run, or sorry, burn would run the bundle in that newly unelevated process, and the elevated one would just stick around until it was done. I think I don't. I, I to go look at burn. I think we're smart enough to know that we want to lo install the ones. Um, in the user mode so that we wouldn't pass it over to the elevated one, but I don't know for sure. Okay. <laughs> but well, I mean, 
we we know it works in a non initially elevated case. Right. Where the the bug here is that out. Windows 10 is launching as elevated and it shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Because we shouldn't have a prompt or an UAC either. That's kind of annoying. Well, certainly at the beginning. Yep. So, it's like, all right. Yeah, this is a Windows 10 thing. They need to go tackle that. So, unfortunately, we need to chip them off that direction. Uh, Unless so we're missing something to indicate that we know what we're doing and don't do this to us, but I don't know what that feature would be in Windows 10 that we need to take advantage of. <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm highly confident they didn't add anything to the to the manifest. Yeah, I, I couldn't wanna... find any documentation on the apps and features back when I fixed the other bug anyway. So <laughs> yeah, it's, so they're just messing this thing up a lot. Is really what it comes down to. Yeah. Whatever they're doing in this apps and features is messing things up. Someone should tell them. <laughs> Wish we had a way to them and tell them that they're messing things up. Someone want to go stock one of the Windows buildings? Yeah, really. All right, we can try going through the OpEx people, see if that works. Maybe they'll have someone near them. All right, um, I believe we Do we want to keep this open at all to look at the unelevation thing? No, I don't want to, I don't want to bring the unelevation, not bringing unelevation oh. back for this. Um, and, um, yeah, so no, no. I, the unelevation just is a mess of bugs. Okay. So I tried very, very hard for a very, very long time, probably longer than I should have before giving up on that thing. So the only way it comes back is if we specifically design for it. And the only one it would work for would be for the clean room process right now, which wouldn't solve this problem, I don't think. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, clean room complicates this, doesn't it? Well, no, clean room works. So, so the key problem with unelevating is that when you unelevate, you end up in a different user context than the thing was launched as, which is mm -hmm. the same problem that we do it, is which is why we don't elevate early the other way around, is so that we have the appropriate user context that we were launched in when we go back and get things from like network shares and so on and so forth. And if right. you're launched elevated, you may get a different set of network shares and access credentials and all kinds of stuff than when you unelevate. So we had all these kooky problems where in unelevating and trying to get back to the original source, it was just failing in all kinds of different ways. Now with the clean room, because we copied the clean room local into our own temp folder, we theoretically could unelevate that because it would be in its nice little safe place. But I don't believe the clean room process will be used to do any installations, so that would not solve the user problem. Right, right. Good point. So. Uh, th that's why I don't think that's the solution. The solution here is for them to, whatever they're doing in Win 10 apps and features, to stop messing up the installers and breaking them, basically, so that we stop having to do workarounds like what Sean did for DTF and, well, I don't know what we do here. Um, it's a problem. 20 bucks. 20 bucks says they're just, you know, launching it via shell execute, run as. Yeah, I, I give it decent odds that they're in some sort of uh, new Win 10 jail process, and it's giving them cookie right. credentials that they're yeah. launching uninstalls from, and because of that, the child process are inheriting all kinds of weird, you know, privileges or non-privileges or whatever, and things aren't working. So the easy so. fix is to is to run it elevated. So the fix is yeah to launch it elevated or whatever they're doing to fix all those problems, right? I still yeah. don't understand why DTF worked as the shell execute versus script. Well, maybe that's the same thing that why shell execute worked, which is because it got its own, you know, environment process whatever that you get mm -hmm. or not to yeah. that great process, which gets you much more tied to your parent process. Well, all all these uh, everything in settings now is a modern app or whatever they're calling it. Exactly. Now. So that's why I'm I'm I have a feeling that it's something related to that. Yeah. Which means they need to quit launching these things from a, a uh, that kind of app and have a separate process to go do it if they're going to launch non-modern apps from this thing. Or launch legacy. Which, I don't know. They, they need to come up with something that doesn't break everything. Yeah. Well, I mean, and clearly they're already doing that for things like Windows Update, which now is only available through the modern settings app. Uh, yeah. Who knows what they're doing there? Well, they're you know talking to a different service that is happily already running elevated. Uh, yes, something. They're doing something there. 
and they just took a shortcut for this because who cares about it set up yeah or yeah or they never thought that someone could actually have a per user app per user install right. <laughs> that's been known to happen in the past as well where I mean I remember getting yeah. into huge fights with the fusion team saying that you couldn't install an MSI per user and I was like of course you can and like no you can't I was like yes you can they're like no you can't and I'm like all right, let me show you. <laughs> Can we stop talking about this now? And I don't know if they ever believed me. So they were trying to defend click once, which I was like, oh, we had you. You, had, you couldn't install an aside per user. I was like, mm, that's not true. <laughs> that's not the reason you did it. If it was, you were mistaken. All right, moving on. I would normally switch back to the PowerPoint slide deck and say we're going to do pull requests, but I'm not because I think that's when my mouse cursor disappears. So I'm going to try to stay here. Uh, Phil, yay, Phil, wrote a whip for us. Awesome. Um, and I wanted to go back over it, even though I know that Bob already pushed it up. Um, although, because it's still marked draft, it is not going to be visible on the website until that comes off. Just something to keep in mind. Um, so the idea here is to have a new UI for the Wix tool set in Wix 4, um, something that is familiar in Windows 10, which will look like Apex. Uh, Phil, so you should remove draft whenever you're ready for it to show up on the website. Yes. Um, and then he wanted to add this, which is basically for discussion. I mean, we yeah, want to be able so to point to the to the rendered yeah to the rendered width. So uh -huh. as soon as you're you're as soon as you think you're like mostly done, that's when it's time to take draft off. I think. Right. And I'm kind of forcing the issue right now by going over your port. Yeah, well, me. and then Rob can ignore you. Uh, so, that's my yeah, that's my problem because I want to to. Yeah, to push this forward. Yeah, join the club. <laughs> All right. So um, in high, cat, high contrast display theme and accessibility tools like Windows Narrator. So this will be cool. Let's see what we, we get with that. Um, all right. So current state using a more metro style. In, yeah, I wouldn't even call it metro. It was like early metro style. It was before we knew what metro was really going to look like. Um, also, absolute dimensions made it tricky. And oh, yeah, the control intent contain automation so you didn't get accessibility. Wow, yes. There's all kinds of things we need to fix. Um, right, no plans to do 3x, 4x. All right, so um, you're going to change the resource mode to be can minimize. Oh, I see, to change the thing to have that. So before we go on, I happen to have an Apex here that, so that we know what we're talking about. This is Win 10 with an Apex we bring it up, this is what it looks like on Windows 10. Um, has a minimize, has a maximize, so you can maximize it. Oh, can minimize it, which is what I just did. Um, you can close it. Has the title here, although it's interesting that it's a question, but fine. Um, has a logo over here. Um, it says who published it and what version and then any capabilities that this have, which of course is much more interesting for a Windows 10 thing than it is for us. Um, when you hit install, the progress bar will be right here. And I say that just because I think it's going to go by really quick. So when you hit install, oh, there goes the, oh, it was above now. Progress bar goes above, and then, oh, look, they changed the title. I had never noticed that before. They changed the title, and then there's launch. I don't know what we're going to do with launch, but whatever. So that gives you an idea of what it is, and it is a resizable thing. Although, it's resizing. It's pretty simple. And there's a minimum size. Oh, look, it has a little scroll. I guess it has to. Okay. So there you go. There's the behavior of the Windows 10 Apex thing that I think we can look like. Yeah. So, back to where we were. Um, yes. Layout. The branding area. The skew layout area, upper left. Um, action along the bottom. Install, update, repair. Uh, aligned to the right. That sounds good. Create a status area above the actions. Which Now, I don't think... So if I close this and I launch it again... Oh, how cool. <laughs> I can install it again, even though it's already installed. What happens if I say install again? It goes a little faster. Wow, that's impressive, isn't it? So I don't think we should replicate Not that really. behavior. <laughs> Sorry, impressive in my, but yeah, whatever. So 
Yes, I think this is a good idea to have update and repair as options there. Apexes are pretty dumb. Their UI could be a little better, and then if I launch it again, at least show me an uninstall button instead of install. <laughs> and especially since it's asking me to install again. Yeah, anyway. It's a beta, or sorry, it's not even that. That's an insider build from. Well, it's a fairly recent insider build, though. So. Well, isn't that the thing they. The, the insider build, the Windows won't have that, right? Mm, isn't that something no, you have to get in the store? No, it's built in now. Oh, okay. All right. You can get oh, to the store for the down store level. Or for down level, maybe? Like Which, Windows 8, maybe? Down level won't support. Windows 8, so you can, I don't know, maybe for side, I know you're right, for when, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. It was yeah, in the side store. Loading? Maybe. Mm. I don't know. I didn't care that much to go hunt it down. I did think it was interesting in the store. Then I noticed that, hey, look, it's in the latest Windows 10 build. So, um, any questions about the overall feel things that we're trying to get? I think it's probably a good thing. I think it will simplify our install. I think a lot of people will be like, hey, look, that's nice. Um, some people might say it's really boring. I'm very curious to see if anybody wishes we had the old UI back. That'll be very interesting, because it's the only way you know if some people liked your old UI. Um, the tic-tac-toe UI? Yeah. The only way you know if someone likes it is you take it away from them. Because <laughs> nobody ever says, ooh, I really like this, and means it, um, unfortunately. Well, but someone will complain. Of that, we can be, be absolutely certain. And then hopefully that means they like the old one. Um, or they just like to complain. Yeah. Um, the .NET Foundation should be the publisher, yes. And it'd be cool if it came from the executable, but you know, whatever, not that big a deal. Probably too much work to even bother. Um, but yeah, it will be .NET Foundation. .NET Foundation is our publisher for you know time for now until it changes again, which Hopefully we don't do that again. Um, but it also be important that that matches whatever it says in the UAC prompt, just so people don't think, you know, don't get weirded out. Um, and that exists in that common localization file that we should be able to use it again. Um, so yeah, it'd be cool to get. So I, I'm fine if there's a border on other op, on other older operating systems and there's not on Windows 10, whatever the fault is. Like, I don't think we should do a whole lot. Like, let's talk about the Windows Chrome, trying to get that to be the same. I don't think it's a big deal to to change that or get that different um, on older. Well, so isn't the isn't it appears to me that that is a normal Windows 10 window yes. for for a modern app. Exactly. So it it has normal window normal Windows Chrome for a modern app. There, yep, yep. So so. We're not we're not talking about you know special drawing the frame right and so I but I what I'm saying is that on Windows 7 I think it'd be fine if it had a normal Chrome on it aka yeah. again don't draw special necessarily Windows 7 just let it be exactly the unnormal is missing the icon that's what um, Phil's saying is that there's no icon here on Windows 10 or down level uh, Windows 10 even. I'm. Mm, that's actually interesting. I wonder how typical that is. I wouldn't kill ourselves trying to get that. I mean, if you if you like open the the settings window, it has text in the title bar, but there's no there's no icon, no system. Well, I mean, you can get a system menu by right clicking the. Yeah, there you go. You can get a system menu by right-clicking the title bar, but there's no icon. And I can't hear, too. Yep. So that, that might just be normal. It look I think it looks weirder because there's no title bar text. Up here? Yeah, just that yeah sorry, in the AppX installer, yeah. I, it wouldn't kill me if there was an icon in ours and there wasn't on the Windows, the AppX one. So I don't know if we have to be. What is used for Alt? Oh, let's see if I have Alt tab in here. App installer. <laughs> Settings. App installer. All right. 
Okay. Um, so for branding, uh, we should be able to get you a logo that's exactly the right size. So I don't, you don't have to do any scale or anything. Just let me know what the size is, and we'll get you a logo that is exactly what you want. That'll be better, I think. And might be able to get you transparent for both white and dark. So light and dark. Um, yeah, is a question. Install Contoso app. So this is a good question. So as you can see, they have a question. Uh, should we do that? No. No? <laughs> nope. It's dumb and ugly. Um, so the reason they do it, I think, is so that they can then change the title once it's been installed, um, which I I roll my eyes at. Um, and I'm curious perhaps to see what they do in case of an error. Of course, I'm sure errors don't happen in their Brave New World, but... If they were, then, you know, did they change the title then to say something different? Um, the other reason I don't really like this here is that I don't – can you try shrinking it? I want to see if, how they handle – It wraps. Uh, the, that title wraps? Yeah. It, you know. Okay. All right. Good, 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 good. Um, but the other thing is that, you know, we have maintenance mode to consider that obviously they don't. That's what Phil is saying right now. Yep. So, yeah, I don't want it to say, you know, because what they're going to say in maintenance mode, uninstall, repair, update. <laughs> I mean, it's change. Uh, it, yeah, it could. I, that's the button that ARP uses whenever it, <laughs> whenever it yeah. like, change. I, I, I think it's, un, I, making it a question is is. It's it's odd because you're not answering the question. It's a yes or no question, and you're answering it with an action. <laughs> uh, yeah. Which just makes me, again, roll my eyes. Um, personally, I'd rather, you know, the title be static. We add another title when, you know, on success or failure, and the action buttons at the bottom describe what you can do. All right, I think that's exactly what Phil was saying in here. Not clear which change, publisher and version, yep, followed by capabilities. So I think for us, so they have a capabilities, because that's an interesting thing in Windows 10, you know, or in Windows 8 and later, you know, things that this app can do to your machine. We're not going to do that. I think in our capabilities, we're going to change this and put the other information that we need to put here. Um, I think we still need to have a license link, probably. Right. Yeah. So I think we should just put our license link. We should just basically put this as our, our list of other information. So up here is the same, and then when we get to this point, it's get a little bit. Um, and on failure... Uh, changing the title, Bob. Were you saying don't change the title? Leave it as whatever it be Wix toolset yada yada, and some down here. Put a failure. I, I think the title should be static, and success or failure should be elsewhere, you know, another another state. Yeah. All right. Well, like Phil is mentioning, we have some pictures. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So, uh, this title I think should be across the top in big. The publisher should be next, the version, and then license and news. I, I would probably, if possible, I would lay it out like they do. License and then maybe the link, maybe the title of the license as a link um, versus just these. But So it like kind of make it look like theirs is what I'm thinking. Um, and then, yeah, get the logo and then the install. This is, this is good. And is this resizable? I, I don't remember... Well, we hit theirs is, and it was kind of nice that it did. Hmm. All right. Is there, can we do that? Like, WPEF should make that pretty easy, right? Just anchor these to the bottom, to the right, and then these all float. Okay. Well, maybe we'll I think we ahead. need we, we need some some support of resizing or at least proper wrapping. Uh, I, I, I would settle for non-resizable as long as we didn't have to worry about you know, text strings overflowing. Yeah, and it seems like that should be done better in WPF than all that we've done in the past. 
Hey, it's doable in wind farms. Right. Hey, that's what we should do. No. Um, although, that would have found our bug. That um, would have found our bug. Exactly right. So here's complete with the view log, the view log folder. Um, do we want these on? We need something to say that it's done. I like the fact that they have a launch button, but that's because they have an app that they can launch. But we're not as fortunate in that way. Yeah, complete and fail. Fail is also similar in that it can shows you. The, so, so I like fail. Try again. I don't know what update means here. Um, oh, exit. You're right. This should be close. Right? Maybe the install button should change the close in the end. I'm just talking. Has anybody agree? I mean, yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Okay. It was X. Yeah, the the other one was like it was an icon with the wasn't trying to be like a door. Or it something. was a door. <laughs> yeah. Um. Our exit sounds strange. Close feels like close the window. I guess maybe that's my close window bias kind of thing. Um. Well, uh, for stuff like this, we should defer to you know Windows guidelines, whatever they are. Yeah. It's not exit. I don't think I ever see an exit button. I don't, yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to look at, uh, you know, they usually update it for, um, you know, major UI changes in the OS, right. so. All right, cool. So it would be cool if we can get this down here and to match the system colors, because like we saw from theirs, let's try to uninstall it real quick. Yeah, okay. Like that. I think this looks good. Boom. That blue, things like that. I think that works pretty well. Um, uninstall or repair. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I want them in that order. I don't know whichever order. Yeah, I would have to look at that. Again, it's a question of what the current style is. Okay, cancel. Is one of those on Windows OK always comes No, first. this is maintenance mode. So, oh, I see what you're saying. OK, cancel. Yeah, he actually calls out in the action buttons that the one. Yeah, there was something about oh, from right to left. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I'd have to think about that. I'd have to think about that. Normally, the most common thing would be left leftmost, but like yeah, it's it's. I think it is a, a question of guidelines, you know, UI design guidelines. So I'm used to seeing repair, uninstall. I mean, that's probably just habit more than anything else. Well, when you think of Windows dialogs, it's OK, cancel. OK is first, cancels second. Um, and on the Mac, it's the other way around, just to keep life interesting. It is different on the Mac. Um, I don't know if they've changed that in Windows 10. I haven't seen enough Windows 10 to know. No, I think that'd be a that'd be a big change. Um, it, it, it also changes when the buttons are are uh, right justified, like they are here, because mm -hmm. you are kind of drawn toward the. Oh God, I'm talking about UX. What do I know about that? Um, yeah, I think I think it's just a, you know the guidelines will probably tell us exactly yep. what to do. You know. So, Phil, your question about text, um, this I think is fine. Like text here with the the blue progress bar and things like that, and this could even be the Cylon or whatever the one that just goes round and round or whatever, whatever the default is for the operating system. I think it's fine for just going around and around. What is it? Marquee mode or whatever it is, but non non specific progress. Yes, because um, we don't know how long it'll take. Exactly, and so in in theirs, they don't they don't break down the um. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Watch, uninstall now. Launch, launch. No, now I've crashed it. 
<laughs> awesome. <laughs> install the app, uninstall it, then launch it. No, crash. That's awesome. No one would do that. We don't no have to do that. that. <laughs> anyway, um, um, so here, yeah, see, there's lots of, yeah, the, the, cannot protect the height. No, I, I agree. Just so, oh, yeah, it can't predict the height, so it would be a little weird if it popped up. Well, let's put, maybe we should work on action text a little bit. Um, yeah, I want to, I, I don't want to. No, not action text. I want it to be um, simple. Bundle text, yep. uh, package text, which package is being installed. Because it's important for us to show mm -hmm. which Visual Studio is being installed, because those are the things that take for frickin' ever. Although, actually, right. they're much faster in 4, because we do the new trick for 4. Yeah, and I, I think, and I think, I don't know if we need action text for the individual packages. I think we should just show the packages because each package itself installs fast enough, except for the Visual Studio ones, but they are probably faster now. So I think if we just say, you know, installing this, installing this, installing this, so on and so forth, I think that will should fit in just about any width. The thing I love is it doesn't even give you an error message. It just disappears. <laughs> it's like, I tried launching it. Nothing happened. Anyway, where do I get that data from? Uh, the BA data, the, the BA um, Bootstrap Application Data XML has um, the, display each, name. the display name for each of the packages. And so the package can, ID. And the package ID. So you can just toss them in a dictionary and display them. Yes, I know. The current BA shows action text, but I don't, it's, it's kind of... Yeah, I'd, I'd like to look at if if we want to if we want the action text at all, and I lean toward no. Um, I definitely don't want to do the 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 full display of you know time and yeah and the full templated thing that MSI gives you. I think it our our we'll be better off with just the package names. Plus, we'll be able to improve. We'll we'll work on the package names until we're happy with them too. So. Oh, the display names, yeah. Yeah, the display names, so we can make them really good. Um, so I like these here. Uh, this failed drops in right where the progress bar was. I wonder if it would be better here next to the buttons, but I'm totally... Yeah, the problem is in maintenance mode. A maintenance mode failure could run up against, you know, four buttons. Not at the end, right? I mean... These buttons will be gone. Oh, mm, yeah. And and what does update do in the in a failure case? Um, yeah, I think we mostly need that 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 lower right button should be. Yeah, I think it should be closed most of the time. Yes. Um, oh, I see. No, I, I think update should be something they do up front and not, like, it's the other option on install. It's like update, install, if update is available, show update. Um, well, if update is available, we probably need to show more information about the update. More than just the, oh, yeah, okay. We Like version number, release notes, whatever. Well, we didn't do that before, but we could. Um, we could put an update version number over here in the UI. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'd be fine in the first, you know, Wix 4 if we just got the update button here next to the install button, and then we can add more text over time too, Phil, because it's getting the basics. You know, I, I appreciate there's the adding more and more stuff. Right, and so I was going to go there, too, is then if an update is available, that's where you're going to get three here, three buttons here. Update, repair, uninstall. That's, that, that reads better to me than update, uninstall, repair, but whatever. That's probably just my history showing through more than anything else. But yes, an update could be available here. Right? 
Yes? Yeah? Okay. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to no man. It's like, ooh, installing. Yeah, I think this will look great. And this, I think, if this is the name of the pack, well, like the, where was this one? Oh, here's this. Oh, here's installer update. Okay. Yeah. I would flip these, I guess. There's something about the UI not changing, even though new buttons show up, right? Right, so that on it installs always over here, so you don't have to the user don't have to stop and think which one is he going to get. Well, again, this is a question of you know what's what's the yeah. recommended action. Yep. Recommendation is probably the update. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, Apple and Microsoft are on opposite there, don't they? Yeah, so this I think is good. Uh, blue thing, checking for updates. Yeah, Sean brings up a good point. You know, if if we treat that the where the capabilities list is for the Apex installer, and we just mm -hmm. we add a quote unquote bullet with mm -hmm. update information, do mm -hmm. you, you still want the update action to be a normal action in you know on the bottom of the screen. I mean, yeah, this is where uh, you know uh, old school would would you know oh hey look there's a message box there's an update do you want it or not? Um, whereas you know 2016 sensibility says you know, oh no it's just the yeah so I think we can add text here if there's an update but I don't think most people are going to read this after the first few times <laughs> honestly. So I think putting the update button down here is important because that's where they're going to see it. Right. Anybody that installs Wix regularly is not going to look up here for an action. Right. No, I'm just suggesting that I think the update button should well, be down here. I, I'm I'm fine with that. I I think. But then I guess I'm I'm more curious about how you find out more. Information. Yeah, uh, go go through the whole story. Someone goes to download Wix. They go to wixtoolset.org and they click a button that says you know, whatever. And they download something. They run it and they get a new thing. They said an update is available. Well, tell me about the update. I just went through this process of picking a build. Why do I want this build? So the action is update. Well, the action is you know download and install the updated version. That we can abbreviate to update, uh, but that you know, uh, if we add a bullet to that list of capabilities that is you know information on the update, then I'm guessing this is a link that's going to take you to the you know the, the release page for that build. Uh, you do get the information from the atom um, that gets passed up to you in the callbacks. Because well, right now the the feed has the release notes. That's right. So I'm not, I guess I'm, I don't. Jacob does this already, don't you, Jacob? You pull the data out of the feed, right? Do we lose Jacob? Okay. I mean, it should be there. Yeah, the update feed. Because it's. Yeah, Adam. It can have arbitrary stuff in it. Yeah, so there's stuff in it that we could display. Content and content type is supposed. But that's going to be the tricky part. You're going to get it as HTML. So. Well, and again, I'm I'm fine if it's not much more than a link. Ah, okay. I'm fine with it as a link, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we're completely bike shedding on this thing. Yes. Um, All right. Like I said, I'm okay if the first revision of this doesn't come in within that update. Having this yeah. check updates and the update button good, adding this next functionality, I think would be cool too. But I would like to get the the basics in first. I think. Always goes to the V3 release. Hmm. In 
in v4? All right, well, we'll have to work with that. That's, that would be, That's a bug. That would be a bug. Um, complete. I think we need the close. All right, this is the close button. All right, cool. Um, So another thing, uh, where's the checking? Now I, this is probably well, yeah, link to forms. We could do that. So, um, is there a question? I was just thinking of. When you start up this, it's always going to show you this progress bar of checking for updates, right? To, you know, why do we show that at all? Yeah, the only reason to show that is to um, give you a chance to have the oh, very fast hard labor scene. All right, well then maybe we shouldn't. Um, I, I'm just wondering if like, do we need some indication that an update's being checked for, right? I know it's generally fast. If it's ever slow, right? If you're over a, I don't know, a modem. I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, do we need to just have something just so they get long enough to know, hey, there's an update happening? I don't. I don't know. Well, I don't know that it needs to be a big deal because it is generally fast. Um, what you know? What if we? I mean, one thing is to like. Block install until the update check is complete. Yeah, I don't really want to do that. Okay. Because that, that that's mean. The update, the update check is part of the overall detect phase. I mean, you have to wait for the tech, tech phase to finish until you even know what you can do. Oh uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So don't even put the install button up. If if anything, I mean, you could do a you could do the marquee progress bar. The checking for updates label, I don't know. It seems a little extraneous. All right. I, I'm only worried about, you know, this comes up and the install button's not there and you have to wait for who knows how long, right? Yeah. Before yeah. anything comes up, you're like, what the, what's going on? Right? You close, well, you, you know, open it again, you close, you open it again, you close, open it again. You're like, the right, thing's broken. Right. It's just that, that behavior of, that I don't want someone going, ah, your install's broken. It's like, well, no, just give it a second. The UI will show up in yeah. a minute. And you're like, what? <laughs> You know, so part of, part of this is the, the marquee progress bar is the only thing. You know, more typically these days you'd have, you know, a little spinny of some kind, right, that shows that something is going on and just, you know, hold on. That That's not great if it's multiple seconds, but for a typical update check, as long as there's a sign of life, I think most people would be, you know, okay hanging out for a second or two. In that case, I think the install button should be present just disabled. disabled? Until it shows. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It fits better anyway. We should always have at least one button. Yeah, you even know what you're going for. Yeah, the you bottom. Know what you're, yeah, you know what you're going for. Yeah. Man, UI is such a pain. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Yeah, when you're not implementing it. Well, I have, I have fun with UI that I implement, too. As long as someone else is doing the graphics, that's no fun. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, even I didn't even think of that. It's WPF, so of course you could have, you know, a spinner of some sort. I think I actually I think it's fine. I would draw I would drop a label just because checking for updates. If we're disabling the install button anyway, um, you know, talking about why seems extraneous. Plus, the, any other detect stuff going on, it would be covered by the marquee. Uh, so, are you saying keep the progress bar or ditch the progress bar? I'm um, sorry. So that was the marquee is the the, the name for the indeterminate the, progress bar. The indeterminate barber 
Berber shop pole, whatever they call it, and marquee is yeah, another. I don't, yeah. But yes, indeterminate progress bar. It sounds it's, very official. Well, it's the progress bar in marquee mode is what it's called. Yeah. And it can be styled. I think ours should be simple. Like, I'd be fine if ours was just a little blue block that moves around, uh, sticking with the blue progress bar. I don't think it should be. I don't think it should be progress bar or barbershop if nothing else in the screen is going to be that fancy. It'd be the fanciest thing on the UI. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, that's just that's just the name I picked. It's yeah. it's whatever whatever the system default is for the indeterminate progress bar. Yes, that um, I think we should stick with the system default. Yeah, agreed. And then yeah, I think. Yeah, just the progress bar running along until we're past detect. Yep. Well, whatever the default is on Windows 10, is there not a default for WPF progress bar in Windows 10 or whatever it is on them? I'm, I'm like I'm fine. It, uh, yeah, I'm fine if it's you know green in Windows 7 and blue in Windows 10 and whatever it is in Windows 8. And so yeah, just don't don't style it. Yeah, don't style it. Whatever. This is a progress bar. It's like, all right, cool. I'll use the system progress bar. This big. Go. And again, it'll probably you know barely blink in and out of existence, typically. Yeah. Then you try to if if that happens a lot and it gets at all annoying, then you try to do something fancy like, you know, don't show it on in the first second or whatever. Right. Right. I, I don't know how to do that. And I'm not saying we do that in the first version, but if that starts becoming nope. annoying, it could be a, all right, this has taken a second. Now show this progress bar um, or whatever. I think about one second is enough for someone to look at the UI and go, why is the install button? Oh, progress bar. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just be like, all right, I'll wait. Okay. We'll explain as necessary. So real quick, Phil has done work to try to do a high contrast one, Ooh. which is very high contrast. <laughs> I don't think I would ever pick this UI by default, but hey. For now there's reason it's listed under accessibility. It's all right. For people it helps, it's awesome, I'm sure. Whew, that green, man. Um, hey, remember hot dog stands? Oh. Oh, dear. That was a long time ago. Oh, God. Yeah, I did just date myself, didn't I? Uh, no, I think it was still on Windows 3. Yeah, it was, it was. I think it was still in 3.1. 3.1, yeah, okay. But, yeah, I think it would be awesome if this theme is straightforward to do, then that would be fantastic. The The real test is that without having to make changes, you can, you know, turn on a high contrast theme on, on the system, mm -hmm. and your UI is usable. Yep. Yep. I had. Does, I've does had WPF give this that. to you by default? The theme or the high contrast? The high contrast support. That would depend on the styling, I think. Yeah. The last time I, I I've had decent luck with. Um, with high contrast just working, but you're you're definitely limited to using you know system colors. This is in a Win32 app, so um, actually it's using Themutal and the support I added for the the system colors. Mm -hmm. um, it unfortunately, you are you are limited. Yeah. Black, gray, white. <laughs> Three colors should be enough for anybody. I suppose you have to change the logo um, by hand, but that's fine. Um, yeah, yeah. And, of course, there is a high-contrast white theme as well. So that's also fun, too. Um, oh, I did not know that. Yeah. No, I think this looks great. I think this is very close. Um, I think this is very close to... Being able to see, I, I think, yeah, I think Wix in the nice big font here, publisher version, and something like that, like this Wix tool set in a big font, um, publisher version, and then a licensed license colon, and then 
ms-rl whatever with a link to our license news colon I don't know if we want to go through the work if we don't do actually it. I I just have license as the link really the news as the link yeah all right yeah make it nice and simple well then I'm just thinking here then it would be you know other information license link I'm just trying to mirror a little bit mirror there um see I don't I wouldn't label it I might do the bullets, but I wouldn't label it. It'll, it'll, yeah, it won't be pixel perfect, but it'll look yes. very similar. I, uh, Phil, it should the the publisher should be exactly the same as what it's shown in the UAC prompt. Um, but I think or, we we can get that from the yes. assembly information, right? Uh, yeah, actually, probably is. But no, it's in the. It should be in the common thing too. I thought. Yeah, it's in the common names. Oh yeah, we have it's all in the, the common yeah, names. It's the there. Strings. No, it's in the publisher. It's in the publisher information, in the strings. The the the. What is, uh, Wix source common Wix distribution dot cs. There sh it should all be in there. If it isn't, we should fix that. That's where all those things should come from. But yeah, I think this is gonna be good. And now that I've seen AppX and the fact that they support resizing, I, I know I probably landed in the other way before, but I really think it would be good if we could. It seems really straightforward what they're doing. You know, these are anchored up here. These are anchored over here. And Hey, look, when your UI is really simple, <laughs> that's easy. It's not that hard, yeah. Basically, these actions are anchored down here. This thing's anchored up in the top right corner. Yeah. yeah, so that image, can we just make that a 256 icon? Uh, it's actual whatever icon? it should be. Whatever it should be. I, whatever Phil needs, yeah. And I'm just thinking the icon would ensure that we have transparency. Our pings have transparency, too. but um, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Never mind. Then. Whatever WPF wants, yeah. I don't know why this one has a blue background on it, but we're probably, I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to go look at what we actually gave them. And this is this is built obviously by the Fire Giant FX tooling, and this is the default logo we give. And I'd have to go back and look at whether this logo that we gave you is transparent or not. This is actually the default logo if the app doesn't provide it, which of course is the one that came from Windows Installer, which is the default. So ours will not look like this. And presumably anybody that wanted to make their app look good would replace the default logo. Um, what is it? That's ARP the install thing. location, ARP install icon, whatever it is. Product icon, our product icon. Our thing. product icon. Product icon. Right. All right. Cool. We're now over, but I think that was fun. Very much. And now we get to uh, once we're done with this, we can implement that as a new theme for uh, with the standard BA. Ooh, there you go. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea too. Especially if we still probably have to find a way of sticking the EULA as a thing in the middle, but there's plenty of room there, right? Um. Mm, yeah. Unless we tell everybody your 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 EULA should live behind a link now. Um, RTF is rather old. <sighs> it is that. All right. Um, anything else people want to bring up this week? Um, things like that. Um, Phil, I if you want to like, um, I think if you if you want to get it functional and then we can keep tweaking UI, I'm all for that. Um, so. What about the question about install? He's still typing something. Um, but like, I'm just saying, if you want to get this like in of you know its functional installs, and then we can keep revving on the UI. That's then. Well, I, I say like you know, feel free to send pull, many pull requests. This is a you know big enough feature. You don't have to do it all in one big, you know, final commit at the end necessarily. Especially since it allows other people to kind of jump in and tweak things or work on different stuff. You know. Jacob's gone, so I can sign him up to maybe look at adding the update information um, in the UI, like Bob is suggesting, and things like that. Um, so just something to think about. The the tricky part, of course, being Wix BA is that if you mess it up and it can't install Wix, then we're going to have a different problem. <laughs> but you know, UI, no problem. Functional, that's bad. UI tweaks on it. Do you want a statement about accepting the license? No, we don't have one now. I think it's just install. And the license the nice thing will be about there. MSRL. About yeah. most open source licenses, you don't actually have to explicitly agree to it. 
Yeah, most of them aren't that way. So the old install button has a statement, but in except the, you know, gosh, yeah. So because it was a big long block, right? We had to fill it with lots of text. Maybe. Um, no, I think it's fine to just have the license there and the install button, and we'll go with that. So. No, this would be good. This would be good. And then I agree. It would be cool if, if after we get this kind of refined and in a good place, if we could make one for Wix standard BA, that would be pretty nice, too. Yeah. No, I, I, and it's going to be a lot easier in Wix 4, thanks to all the work in Themutal that... that Sean and I Sean did. Done. Yeah, you guys have done it. Uh, and I did some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Sean did a lot of declarative stuff to kick that yeah. kick forward. So, um, yeah, and then it'll be like, hey, look, here's the modern Win 10 theme. <laughs> if you want your app to look like that. Um, yep. I wonder if we're going to see apps do that now that Visual Studio's UI is kind of old. Um, presumably they're changing it with the new UI since they have so many. They're trying to make so much more selectable that they've gone away, I think, from simple and have gone much more to configurable. So we'll yeah. see. <laughs> Their UI will be very different the next time anyway. Yeah, that's totally fine. I, I think sending it out, getting feedback, and then changing it from there is totally, especially UI. Iterating on UI when people can see it is much easier. Um, and the screenshots are great. Those are very helpful. Yeah, UI and screenshots, who, who'd think? So, all right, well, we're obviously pretty excited about a new UI for Wix. Um, I think that's all we got. We're way over, but that's because we're having fun talking about our own install UI. Um, so, yeah, let's have this go. I think we'll have uh, another two weeks. We'll see how many bugs show up in that time frame. Otherwise, you know, if you have things, keep you know pushing forward, send the pull requests, things like that. And we do need to sit down and talk about um, Wix 3. Uh, 11. I think we'll know more. Well, we'll see. Need to get more information about when Visual Studio 15 is coming out. Dev 15 is coming out. So we kind of have an end goal for 3.11 in mind. Um, things like yeah, that. Yeah, when, when is build? I don't know. Next build? So if yeah. they hold to their it's, you know, next fall or next spring, but we'll see. We need so. something in the fall. You think so? Get more information. Well, uh -oh. I'm not saying they'll ship that. I'm saying that's usually where we hear about, you know, yeah. dates. And we should go ping Heath and have him, you know, get us the updated goods and all that and say, just let right. us know. Hey, by the way. Yeah, well, maybe we'll just ping him and say, hey, where are you guys at with all this? Can you drop us some of that? Because so, he did the last ones, which was really helpful. So maybe we'll do that. All right. Um, I think there's some things for us to talk about in a couple of weeks, so we'll kind of get those on the agenda. If you have anything else you want on the agenda, as always, you know, let me know. We'll pop you in. Otherwise, yay, this will be fun stuff. Maybe we'll talk about the UI in two weeks, depending on the progress Phil makes. We might be talking about the, oh, that's pretty. Done or almost done or something like that. So until two weeks from now, you guys take it easy. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.